Thank you for joining session 11 of the PAFI Forum on day two. It is a pleasure to have you participate in this session, which will see our political representatives discuss the critical issue of building trust, strengthening federalism, which is essentially how can the various layers and levels of government that we have as a construct in India across central, state, local, and panchayat levels of governance uh, solve the problems and the net outcome that the citizens are looking for, which is essentially a peaceful life, improved quality of life, sustainable economic opportunities, quality health care, and better education for their children, and employment and commerce opportunities for the very young population in India. A warm welcome to our moderator, Vikram Chandra, and to our esteemed political representatives who are representing the several political philosophies, which is as varied as is our vibrant democracy. PAFI as a forum, where we are conducting the 10th annual forum, interfaces with four key stakeholder blocks, which epitomizes the four letters of the forum. P as in political, A as in administration, F as in financial and economic practitioners, and I as in industry. This session is focused on getting the views of the political pillar of the stakeholder community. And it will be very interesting to learn on how more cohesion can be established between political beliefs and compulsions. But as elected representatives, how the ultimate interest of providing a better life for the people could drive the synergy. Public affairs is also about building relationships. And I need to highlight that there are two panelists here with us this evening, with whom I've had the privilege to interact in my past life in Calcutta. Sri Dinesh Tivedi, member of parliament, and I were members of the same Rotary Club, where we undertook several social relevant, socially relevant programs and initiatives. And earlier on in my life, Dr. Sopan Das Gupta was my senior in school. I now hand over the baton to Vikram to conduct this session, and I look forward to the deliberations. Thank you, and over to Vikram. Thank you so much, Mr. Chakrabarti, and I have to say it's such a pleasure to be here at PATHI uh, and to get a chance to speak to many of our of, of, of political friends whom we may not have had a chance to do a TV debate with for a, a long time. But I think perhaps over the next one hour, we can discuss some of the very crucial questions around where politics is headed and where federalism is headed and what the relationship is between parties and the center and the state. And, and let's try and do it if we can in, in something that was used to be the TV style debate of about a decade ago when we could all discuss issues and talk to each other, uh, but perhaps do so without shouting if we can try and achieve that. I know it's not 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 normal or fashionable right now, but let's, let's try it anyway. But giving the panelists out here, I'm sure they would have it no other way. Dinesh Bhaitravedi, it's a, it's a pleasure in the Trinamool Congress. Uh, it, it, it's be great to hear from you, Shapandas Gupta, uh, uh, BJP Rajya Sabha uh, MP. Kalikesh Deo has just joined us uh, from the Biju Janta Dal. Great to have you with us. And Priyanka Chaturvedi, Rajya Sabha MP, uh, belonging to the Shiv Sena. Um, Maharashtra, one of those states where the entire question of center state relations perhaps is as acute as it ever has been. West Bengal, another state where that has that has often happened. And and Orissa, which uh, kind of, which the Biju Janta that represents, has perhaps been having a slightly more quiet and cooperative time with the center of late. But I'm sure you know we would still like to know from you whether whether that could that could change at any point. Um, why don't I start off with you, though, uh, Shafan? Uh, from the point of view, when you're looking at the situation around you right now, there's a constitution which specifically says this is the way federalism should work, this is the way center-state relations should work, this is the way institutions should work, and that's layered then with 70 years of experience and precedent and traditions and how things are done. Are you getting the sense, as many are, that some of that is starting to fray at the edges, where it's becoming a lot more acrimonious, where there's a lot less trust. Trust is the theme which keeps kept on coming up in Bathy. A lot less trust in relations between centers and states and less trust in the institutions themselves. That's a theme I'm going to throw to all of you. 
<laughs> well, let's start with you first, Shabha. Yeah, uh, thanks, Vikram. Uh, yeah, Vikram, if you look at it, there is there are two aspects of the constitution. One is the separation of powers between the center and the states, including a concurrent list, which is somewhat gray, blurred area. But, you know, when the constitution was actually formulated and as it evolved till about the 1970s, you had a system of one-party dominance. And subsequently, I think sort of post-1967, certainly after post-1977, it's there's not been a single state in India yeah. where multiple parties have not assumed power. At every point, there have been changing of changes of governments. Now, this sort of competitive politics has, of course, created certain newer, fresh challenges to the constitution and the manner in which we we have the different philosophies operating, etc. Now, uh, the most famous example of this, of, the, of a sustained center state conflict, which uh, was there, was during the left rule in West Bengal. Right from 77, I think they had a sustained campaign that the center is discriminating against uh, the states. Now, many of these uh, deficiencies, whichever they may have pointed out, have been addressed to some extent by a more equitable, but not entirely perfect, system of financial devolution. But at the same time, I think the states are right in saying that their sort of revenue base is still very narrow in a lot of ways. And, and I think that's a legitimate complaint which most of the states have. The GST principle has managed to create some, you know, yes. I, I believe it's been positive, but there are these, and on top of that, there's the conflicting philosophies which are there. Now, on this, take this simple question of the farmer's bill. Now, here you have different philosophies working, different interests working. I mean, by and large, it would be fair to say that the larger the farmers, farm size, as happens in Western UP, Punjab, Haryana, there's going to be a lot of opposition to it. Whereas where there are more smaller, fragmented holdings, they see opportunities. Not that it's necessarily worked out in that sort of fashion, but you have these. Now, the question arises, can there be one, one law for the whole country? And if there is one law for the whole country, can it be actually successfully implemented? I mean, can we have multiple... Uh, I mean, here, here if, if we are going to create a market, can there be markets rather than a market? Now, these are questions which I don't think there's any single answer to this. But I think these are the type of questions which are there. So I would say that while, on one hand, the friction between the center and states is defined by some sort of a lack of trust, most of the time, it's also various different approaches which are there, and also the, the compulsions of having a measure of uniformity. So I think these are the sort of broad parameters on which this, this functions, and that's at a theoretical level. Of course, at the ground level, it translates into more uh, abrasive sort of conflict. Right. So the fact that there will be some conflict between center and state and interpretation and philosophically should the states have more power or the center have more power, that's a debate that is going to continue. It's been there from the time the constitution was framed and it will presumably continue into the future. It's also not unusual. You'll have exactly the same debate taking place uh, elsewhere. Uh, but if you can look at the recent history and Dinesh Mathavedi, let me just get you in on this. Chopin spoke briefly about, about GST and that perhaps would have been one of the moments where trust, uh, it, there's always been some some mistrust, but trust was actually quite high. What the centers, what the states agreed to do, give up a certain amount of autonomy in many, in a lot of areas and hand that over to the center. You could have, and that was not that far back. You could have said that as one of the high points of, of trust and uh, and federalism working in a positive manner. Have things have things deteriorated a bit uh, uh, since since then? And that was just three or four years ago. There seems to be a lot more tension now 
uh, Shapan spoke about the farmers, uh, the farm bills, the way in which the farm bills are pushed through now means that some states are saying, okay, we're going to have our own laws to overturn that. It's seeming a lot more antagonistic than it was two, three years ago. So, uh, Vikram, first of all, thank you to Pafi for having me here and wish you all uh, under these circumstances. I know it can't be the same, the festive seasons of Durga Puja and Navratra and all. So, wish them all the very best. Having said that, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, Sapan has really articulated a lot of things uh, which uh, I feel he has hit the nail as well. And uh, when you talk, the basic thing is trust, right? And I think constitution is very clear. What is the power of the state? What is the power of the center? And what is in the concurrence list? See, the whole idea, Vikram, that we also have conflict within a family. But the trust is not broken. So what happens that there has to be more discussions within. Uh, uh, Sapan rightly touched upon the farmer spill. It would have been so nice that if you had called the opposition, had met them and sent the bill to perhaps uh, some kind of a joint committee. So what is perhaps lacking is more interaction and discussion because at the end of the day, uh, you know, the difference between statesmen and politicians. When we are politicians, we are just looking at power. A statesman, you know, and I'm not trying to be philosophical about it, we'll come and go. But I think the structure needs to be strengthened. And that is where the very fact that we are discussing whether the structure is getting little, uh, you know, nudged, uh, it means there is something. But I'm sure given the uh, the, the Indians uh, mind, uh, we can still rectify, we can still come together. And here comes, uh, you know, I've, I had, I'm not necessarily talking about this particular establishment. I've always felt that when it comes to the chairman of Rajya Sabha or the speaker of the Lok Sabha, and I repeat, I, I'm not talking about this particular, I always felt that they should be beyond party. Uh, unfortunately, what happens that if I'm a speaker from a particular party, I also need to go and get a ticket for the next election. So you somehow, I can still understand that a little bit of till, but total, and if, if, if the political party runs through the chair, then, then there is a lot of conflict. And I will never approve of the acrimony which happens from time to time. We, we are a democracy which is vibrant. And, and you will agree with me that when the world is uh, is almost collapsing, uh, we, they, are, they are looking at India. And India is very vibrant. And I feel that there is still a lot of opportunity to talk, discuss, understand each other, and sort it out. Elections will come and go. During election, we can have all kind of acrimony. Uh, but that's, that's the dynamism of politics. But yes, uh, when, when Sapan talks about that trust, I totally agree that we need to build this trust. And, and you know, Sapan and I can sit down and say, hey, look here. But, but the thing is now everything has gone down to, you know, like in, in, in Bengal, we have football. It is one club versus another club. They will never agree, yeah. even agree to disagree. So I think this acrimony is not good for anybody. At the end of the day, right. I think we have a structure and we have to follow that. Thank you, Victor. I, I think one of the points I'm going to come back to all of you on is the, the, the structure, what can be done to strengthen that, and the obvious pillars that go along with the structure, which are institutions, is something else that I think you, know, you have to take a look at. How do you keep it above all, all uh, party politics? Because, Priyanka, if I can turn to you next, I mean, one, one state where... That, that tension is actually so so glaring and so obvious and it's so much in your face and your ears you know, on, on, on the most constant basis is of obviously Maharashtra right now. I mean, to have a situation where clearly the state of Maharashtra, the Maharashtra government doesn't seem to trust uh, an organization like the CBI to come and investigate there because you think they could be biased. Uh, police forces are sniping at each other. Um, 
Where's all of this coming from? Look, I know there's going to be a blame game. I, you know, the Shiv Sena will say the BJP started it and look at the center and what central institutions are saying. And the center and the central institutions will say, look at what the Maharashtra government is doing. But is this a slide that you think is going to continue for a while? I see, firstly, I wouldn't want to get into a blame game. We need to understand how this all began right from uh, the day the government was formed. Uh, the central government needs to respect that uh, in a democracy, sometimes uh, Bharti Janta Party can go form a government in Goa, Bharti Janta Party can go form a government in Mizoram, Manipur, the way they, through alliances, etc. In Maharashtra, they were unable to do that. And the center needs to respect the uh, uh, democratic framework and the constitutional norms that were followed to form this government. However, we have seen there has always been a conflict as far as the uh, support from the center is needed. Uh, as far as we are concerned, ever since COVID struck, uh, the government has been very clear, uh, coming from the chief minister himself, that we are not going to get into any blame game, not going into politics, because this pandemic is something that is impacting the globe, not just uh, India, not just Maharashtra. But repeatedly we have seen how, uh, through various central agencies, interference in investigation, trying to malign institutions of the state, trying to raise questions and uh, doubts on the credibility of, uh, you know, uh, very strong institutions under direct attack from the center. And we see the uh, rush and the hurry of central agencies to come and investigate in, in the state of Maharashtra, which not just disrupts and demotivates uh, governance, but it also creates a lot of friction between the center and the state. This is something as a big brother, I would assume center would take that responsibility understand what the shortcomings are and understanding also that it becomes their dharma like i remember uh, atal bihari vajpayee ji talking about raj dharm ram dharm and ram rajya dharm etc but this is how it works you have to understand that uh, you have to respect the structures which have been constitutionally in place you've used those structures you've been part of the uh, democracy you've been part of the loopholes that exist that do not exist so either we strengthen it by giving due respect or we continue to be in a position of conflict, which we saw much recently with the governor writing a very nasty letter to the chief minister. Uh, it was more a political letter, less a letter coming from the chair of the governor and the responsibility that comes along with it. And then we saw how uh, the second case of CBI wanting to come and investigate in an already ongoing investigation in Maharashtra. So these are a few things that I would say the central government also needs to respect, also needs to have that trust. Trust cannot be a one-way street where the state is expected to count out to everything the center uh, thrusts down our throat. Well, when we have an opinion, we have a way of working. You will continue to interfere in it or uh, raise, uh, uh, you know, uh, doubts on our credibility. Right, Priyanka, let me get Kalikesh and then you know, throw the question of institutions open to everybody. Kalikesh, I mean, obviously, Odisha uh, is, is a state where the Biju Janta Dal seems to have for a long period. Obviously, you've been in some way close to the NDA to the extent that you somehow seem to have found a way that you're working closely with the center, not getting into any antagonistic positions and, and finding a fairly peaceful way of proceeding with that. Um, would that be a fair way of characterizing it for starters? I think so, Vikram. I think uh, no matter which government has been in the center, whether it's been the Congress or the UPA or NDA, we've actually been... Uh, <laughs> Forgive me. Hello, this is the homework. <laughs> we've actually been uh, fairly cooperative with the center. And I think we recognize that even though we have a federal structure, it's, uh, it's an asymmetrical fa federalism that we practice in India. The government of India, the union, certainly has more, more powers in terms of <coughs> having to override certain subjects in the concurrent list. Uh, even... Uh, you know, Sopan spoke about tax, uh, tax uh, raising and income raising. Even then, uh, I think it's not completely unionism. I think what, what is happening today is that in their bid to concentrate and consolidate the power, uh, uh, many, many careful aspects of the Constitution are coming under pressure. I wouldn't say a threat, I would certainly say pressure. I think uh, the big difference with this government that I find, which may not have been there in the last 10 or 15 years that I've been in politics, is that the, there's a, certainly a lack of consensus building. I think that if, you know, I mean, the numbers are always in the, to, uh, in the favor of the government in power at the center. But even then, governments have reached out to various opposition parties to try and build a consensus. 
I think where where the government today falls short is really reaching out to parties which are in the opposition, which may have a not very good relationship with them, even publicly or in the political sphere. But it is the job of the government to reach out, the government of the day. I think that's where we are sorely missing uh, in today's politics. I think at the end of the day, the government of the center will always get its way. However, there's no harm in doing it in a nicer fashion, in a more congenial fashion. All right, that's a, that's a polite way of saying talk to the opposition a lot more. Humans. Uh, saying some of what the others said, but saying it in a particularly light manner, for, in, in, especially in the year 2021. Uh, Shapandan, everyone, I just want to throw a, 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 a sort of a bigger question open to all of you, which is essentially the question of institutions. And I, I think most people are articulating it. And it's very interesting how everyone seems to be articulating it when they think the, uh, the other parties are doing it. It's not that this is the first time in Indian history that parties or governments, whether it's the central or the state, have been accused of taking over the institutions of democracy and using them for partisan ends. I mean, it's been talked about for 40, 50 years. But I think what's now being said is that it's happening to a greater extent. And uh, the opposition parties will say that the BJP is doing it at the center and in the places where the BJP rules, the BJP will say, why are you pointing a finger at us? Look what you're doing in the states that you own and you run, well, not own, you, the states that you are running, uh, you know, whether it's a Shiv Sena or the Trinamool Congress or the Congress in Punjab or wherever it is. So you're having a situation where there seems to be almost a competitive effort to erode some of the institutions, to erode the independence of the institutions. And then you go on pointing fingers and saying that we're not doing it, it's the other person who's doing it. So for a, for a person sitting outside, you're getting a little scared because you see you, it's looking like a slippery slide. Chopin, is that a fair way to look at it? Yes and no, in both senses. You know, firstly, let's look look at the consensus building. I think, you know, one of the most remarkable aspects of consensus building, which has actually taken place under the Modi government, has been the fact that almost every single GST measure has gone without a vote. You know, it's been agreed in the GST council yeah, by consensus, even when yeah. there are differences, and there have been new differences on the deficits of late. Yet, despite initial posturing, everybody is trying to get together a system which is agreeable to both the center and the state. Maybe you'll get to a system where neither is terribly happy, but at least that's the consensus. You know, that, that'll come about. Now, when it comes to other institutions and the partisan way in which it's happening, I think the first thing we have to recognize and is a point which, I'm, uh, which I stressed in my first intervention was that we are today in a situation of highly competitive politics in every single state. And I think that's a very important point to note, which wasn't the case in the first 30, 40 years of the Constitution, where the Congress really dominated in more or less every part of India. And therefore, the question of partisanship, when both the center and the state were in tandem, they didn't really happen. Now you have a situation where you have a greater degree of a, a greater de degree of inquisitiveness, a greater degree of accountability, whether it's done through the opposition, whether it's done through the media, whether it's done through the other civil society organizations. It depends. And certainly social media has added to this whole uh, the whole uh, din of the whole of this situation so you have a greater focus so even small transgressions are sometimes magnified and amplified and made into something bigger than they are now for i mean i personally am still a little puzzled and uh, mystified as to how a very unfortunate death of a film star in Mumbai suicide, has become such a huge issue. I mean, little, I mean, it mystifies me. I'm also equally mystified as to why the civil war involving two television or three television channels should become an issue of great state importance. But they have. And I think it's, it's, it's indicative of the type of you know, the, the type of fractious politics which is going on. Now, in in West Bengal, I often feel that the party uh, Dinesh Bhai represents as being partisan. What is, what is my instinctive response? 
or demand a CBI inquiry. And I think we know that because we say we'll get a fairer deal. Whether we get a fairer deal or not is another matter altogether. But that's the that's the you know the, the, that that's the knee jerk political response to it. Now, at the same time, I find it bizarre, for instance, that when a national education policy is announced, now everybody has their views on it. A state can unilaterally say we won't implement it. Now, so you have very extreme examples going on. And I'm not saying that West Bengal government is the only government which is responsible or that Maharashtra government is guilty only of transgressions. I think there are a lot of governments all over. I mean, everybody is not as placid and composed and as the my uh, friend Kalikesh's chief minister, who is unflappable at the best of times. Yes, it's, a, it's a somewhat <laughs> same way of approaching it. But, but Kevin, I mean, if I could just take what you said forward a little bit. I mean, sure, politics has become a lot more competitive. That's been the situation you're right for the last 30, 35 years. It's not 1980 till now. It's been fairly competitive, right? Uh, 70s and onwards. Um, but Dinesh, I, I guess the question is coming. The institutions that are the framework of a democracy should ideally be, they, they are the most important when it is a very toughly, when it's a, when it's a, I mean, they should be working on both ends. Either if it's a authoritarian government, the institution should be able to withstand whatever an authoritarian government is saying. And if a shopping is saying it's a very tightly competitive political system, all the more reason why those institutions should be able to, to sustain that. I mean, why should you, the, the very fact that what Chopin is saying is that maybe it's better to get the CBI to investigate this, almost is presupposing that a state police force as an institution is biased and partisan and concomitantly that the CBI or other such agencies are easier to manage and easier to control. And I don't think either of those is necessarily a good thing in a, in a, in a democracy. The institution should be about party politics. So this is what it is that in a democracy, uh, without the institution, there is no democracy. Uh, am I audible, uh, Vikram? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. So, so without uh, uh, institution, there is no democracy, there is no rule of law. Now, when, when we are discussing about, let's say, Maharashtra in particular, and when we are talking about CBI or the state police, I just don't understand whether it is the CBI or the state police, they are basically run by IPS officers, which are comrades, which are from the same institutions. And if you do not trust, if one does not trust the other, then the institution has collapsed. If one IS officer belonging to a particular cadre, let's say a state, does not uh, really uh, trust the center IS officers, then I think the institution has collapsed. If yeah. people have questions uh, on, on the judiciary, for instance, then the institution of judiciary has collapsed. And, and I, 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 only, the, only a few months back, when the four senior most judges, when they come out for the first time and saying democracy uh, is in jeopardy, democracy is in trouble, and we want to tell people that please save democracy. It has never, ever happened. So it means if there is a smoke, then there has to be a fire somewhere. And I think it is our duty collectively, like media. I'm, I'm sure, Vikram, you will pardon me. Uh, people have lost faith in media. Would you be surprised for the hey, last I, six months? I, 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 you, I don't have to pardon you. I've lost faith in the media. Why do you think I've quit? Exactly. <laughs> so, so, so today, uh, I, I don't watch television news at all. Because it's not news, it's just views. And when you four people are sitting, if, if the anchor uh, view, you don't agree, then anchor cut you off. So, you know, we have lost a civil way of living, which is not good for India. And I tell you, Vikram, it does not reflect the ethos of India. And it does not even reflect ethos of our culture. We are a collective culture and, and it's a very rich culture with a lot of talented people. And I hope this is just a hiccup. And I think Sapri's I, party has fantastic numbers, and I think they can. Uh, I mean, he will say that we are doing it, but but tell me on on, on demonetization, 
on, uh, on, on farmers' bill and so many such issues. How would it matter if you just take the opposition, take the, take the leaders into confidence and say, look here, this is what it is. Even, uh, even the managing of the pandemic, today we are under the National Disaster Management Act. How would it matter? I know the Honorable Prime Minister has done a lot of uh, webinar with the chief ministers and all. So, but take everybody together and there are certain issues which, like farmers bill. Everybody said that, okay, you guarantee MSP. Your bill is okay, but guarantee MSP. There are certain good points. But how does it matter? If you whole idea is, please talk to us. We are also interested in the goodness of the country as you are. So if we are doing the same work, institutions has to be stronger. Today, I must tell you, uh, we have somewhere down the line, uh, and I'm not trying to apportion blame, uh, lost, in, lost the faith in the institution. You can blame the Congress party for sure. I mean, okay. they have started. They have started a lot of stuff, but that doesn't mean that no, we I do follow that. I, I think it's good that in a, a, a number, all of you are speaking. Or these are these are things that actually, you know, how do you keep India strong? Is something that should cut about uh, party political right. life. So, if institutions are weak, it should affect all of us. So bother anybody who's who's a patriotic Indian and who loves the country, because at the end of the day, it is it is in everyone's interest that this be strong, even if. Someone's using a, using it in one way or the other right now. Priyanka, I just wanted to come to you. What what Dinesh Pai was saying about, uh, and I'm going to say this to you because you're the veteran by now, probably of a lot more. Seeing as I haven't been on TV for a while, a lot more TV debates recently than I have. Um, the fact that the media is also as polarized as it seems to be, as partisan as it seems to be, social media is as polarized and as clear cut in its views as it seems to be. Everyone is therefore getting locked into little ideological echo chambers. I wonder to what extent that is exacerbating the trends that Dinesh Bhai was just talking about, because it suddenly becomes, uh, you, we are all getting locked into positions where it is us and them, and it's like two hostile, warring nations which are fighting with each other instead of different parties in different states and a state center within the same country whom we all love, love, love. That's the way it should be. But it's almost right now, Maharashtra and I mean, like Mumbai and Delhi is almost like India, Pakistan, if you know what I mean, right? It's that sort of a of hostility that is coming up. And maybe, maybe media and social media and other things are contributing to that. But you agree to that with that? Uh, I, I quite agree to what uh, Trivedi ji was saying with regards to how media is also uh, not uh, taking responsibility for what for, for the kind of content it's putting out there. Opinion makers have become actually the new shapers, which I think is unfortunate. Getting six people to sit on a debate and to speak only what the uh, moderator wants you to speak is not how our civilizational values are. Civilizational values have been of argumentative Indians uh, coming to a consensus after deliberations and discussions and differences. But this is something that we are losing. And that's the core value of this nation. Ever since you know we fought for our independence, after we got our independence, look at any parliamentary discussion uh, You know when uh, the, uh, the constitution also was getting framed. If you look at those, you learn so much. But we're losing all that. I, was, I mean, it was my first session in the parliament. And I realized that there was just no consensus building effort happening. But this is where we are losing out. And I think uh, social media, because it's become a more, uh, people have become more evolved about democracy. People want, are more interested in democracy, uh, uh, democracy and how it works in the political systems. They also have a point of view. But it is the social media which can create these fake accounts, which can create a fake narrative and push something which may not necessarily be true and create positions which are difficult to, I would say, uh, become centrist, where we can have a common point. And media, uh, television media, I think, takes it to a whole new level. I'd just like to say one thing about what Swapanji said about one particular death that happened in Mumbai and the way it exploded. It is something for all of us to reflect. There were uh, institutions were questioned, where uh, Mumbai police forces were questioned. However, the end result has been that C uh, CBI is all set to file a closure report which would be more or less similar to what the uh, Mumbai police were saying. But whatever you, what has happened in our political uh, uh, blame game, you have demoralized, demotivated an institution which has been known across the world 
for doing some credible work, credible investigation. Now, for that matter about TRP scam, the, I, the questions were not about particular television channels. They were about the TRP and how they are being gamed to manipulate people and manipulate ad revenue. That should be our discussion. Our discussion should not be which channel has been identified. Our discussion should be what's the way forward. But we don't have those discussions. We keep endlessly talking, making it a, a blame game. Oh, look, you were uh, accused this channel. This channel is absolutely holier than thou. That is not how it works. That is what right. we're losing. That's the essence we've lost. Right. Can I catch if I can get you in on this? You know, I've heard something said about about Donald Trump very recently. You know, in, in America, this, this thing is discussed. And to some extent, it has relevance to what Dinesh Bhai, Swapanda and, and Priyanka, all, all three were saying. Um, sometimes you don't, you were talking about consensus building and doing the tough thing of getting everyone together and trying to come, come up with something which everyone agrees. Sometimes it is easy for a government, any government, somebody in authority, anybody in authority to say, if you can use social media or the media or the mass media or find directly communicate with people, if you can communicate a particular message to people and you can do that really effectively, why go through the effort of trying to do the consensus building? So whatever the issue is, <laughs> if you can do something in Odisha tomorrow and convince everybody that, that it's the right thing, uh, you may not need to actually go around trying to build a consensus or, or talk to people about it. This is a theme that is being spoken about in connection with the United States. And I'm not entirely sure that it's not equally accurate and relevant here. No, I think it's uh, more accurate and relevant here. You know, the fact that uh, Donald Trump has used his, used the social media and used certain machinations to project his thoughts, his image, and his views forward and ride over or at least uh, subvert the views of any opposition is undoubtedly true. And I think that that gets held across the globe now and increasingly more so in India, where I find uh, institutions like the media and like the sometimes the courts, the bureaucracy, uh, even parliament itself completely subverted. I mean, the first thing we as parliamentarians and, and ex-parliamentarians need to look at is the fact that we cannot raise a voice against the dictate of our party leaderships. And I'm going, I'm cutting across parties here. I'm BJP, of course, but even Trinamool, my party, um, I'm sure Priyanka's party would have the same issue. And if we have a differing opinion to our leader, we cannot even voice it because our tickets depend upon it. The fact that we have a three-line whip, which tells us to vote in a certain way, has completely killed independence of parliament. Parliament, And as a result of which, the Indian parliament is completely under the thumb of the executive, the, the head being the prime minister, where whatever he says actually goes through. And very few differing voices actually come out unless they have been sanctioned by the leaders of their own parties. Now that's not, I'm, I, I struggle to believe that this was this kind of political expanse that, uh, that was thought of when India was, when, when India was gained its independence. I think we've had some very fine uh, parliamentarians and more to come, hopefully. But the, if we, unless we introspect into our own systems, we're not going to be able to change that. But having said that, uh, you know, social media is, 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 uh, is a medium, like uh, media was. At least social media doesn't claim to have an independent view. There, there is a partisan view. The world is partisan now. The media, which should be having an independent view, which should be having, you know, which should be reporting the truth, has become more opinionated. And they've been divided, as it has always been in the US, but divided between the two camps of left and right. Uh, unless you have money today, unless you have the media, unless you have social media, unless you have resources to put in, you are unable to win elections or project to view forward. But disturbing to me is that even in institutions which were supposed to be severely grounded in independence, such as the judiciary, such as the bureaucracy or the executive, as they call it, and the media have fallen down under pressure to this. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the solution is on this matter, because the problems are so many in, in such multiple areas, unless everybody agrees to, to sort of find a solution, we are facing some tough times ahead. Right, I think I think you're right. These are all issues that, that need to be confronted. And quite frankly, I think some of these are issues that if all of you across party lines, uh, I mean, not from the Congress out here, but presumably, uh, you know, they would they would also so agree. If all of you cutting across party lines seem to be sharing the concerns on many of these issues. 
let's hope that you know behind the scenes in parliament sometimes all of you get a chance to to talk a little bit about it but you know in, in certain areas i think that intervention is even more important than anything else and i i'm going to turn to something like which is as fundamental as fundamental rights the basic structure of the indian you know constitution and issues like that and and, and Shepata, let me get you in again on this and and get everyone's uh, uh, views on, uh, on this if you think of what is happening today even on something as basic as freedom and liberty which is the basic fundamental tenet on which any democracy in any freedom free, free country is based, you're today having a situation where depending on who is in power in the states or in the center, you could have a situation where FIRs are being filed against journalists, for example, journalists have been arrested, it's happened in Maharashtra, Odisha, you know, center. It, so it's not, it's not necessarily one party alone or two parties uh, that are doing it. It seems to be happening increasingly. A journalist writes against you, you don't like, have that journalist arrested. Somebody saying something that you don't like on Facebook, have that person picked up and arrested. I mean, how many cases of this have we seen in the last three to four years? So therefore, this is this is something which in an ideal world, the judiciary should be perhaps uh, the institution that should be stepping in to stop it. But in the absence of the judiciary doing it, uh, or, or is it the judiciary that should be doing it? Or do you think some way, Chopin, if this is for the political system to get together and say, look, let's not let's not go so to, let's not go so far. Let's not actually allow institutions to be misused to this extent when it starts in, in infringing or subverting something as basic as fundamental rights. Well, I think to some extent it's happened already because I think it's the failings of the political system which has allowed the judiciary to encroach on areas which uh, should really be of no concern of the judiciary. I mean, today the judiciary is dictating large parts of public policy, which uh, it is unfortunate, but I can also recognize that there is a great deal of public support for it in certain areas, because they're seen in a lot of ways as being impartial, because they have a certain measure of trust which the political system has lost. But that's already beginning to happen, but that's not a long-term way out of it. And I think judges can't be allowed to become the rulers because at the end of the day, they are not accountable to anyone. And that's not really law. They are making public pronouncements. But Chapin, do you think... I'm just, just, hang on, okay. hang on. Chapin. Let me just, just finish. Yeah. Now the real question with this fractiousness and consensus, etc., I recognize what Kalikesh said, that, you know, the, the political culture within all the political parties needs a serious, serious review. You know, we, we are failing ourselves for being completely regimented in our outlook, which we are not. Everybody has, there's more commonalities between Kalikesh and me, and probably with Priyankaji and me, than we care to admit. But... Circumstances are such that, you know, it's not possible to admit that. And secondly, there's a larger question, which I have to pose, and this is, comes down to the question of consensus. How do you promote change in this country? And this is, to my mind, very important, because there is something in the nature of the consensus-building exercises which is inimical to the process of change. You go around talking, if you make it a complete talking shop, you'll never get anything done. It'll be like the India-China border talks. It'll be never-ending and, and no conclusion. Now, change sometimes needs a measure of decisiveness. And what's ironical is that the public, the, the voting population, prefers leaders who just sort of go on and say, OK, I'm going to do it, I've done it. So you have these various things where you have public opinion trusting the judiciary, judiciary encroaching on the thing, the con consensus being a noble virtue, but at the same time, decisiveness being appreciated by the people. So how do you reconcile all these various cross currents? These are real issues which we've got to think about. I don't know how we'll deal with it, but at least we've got to think about it. It's not as simple as that, that it's, it's a uniform failure in one way or the other. 
All right, that's an interesting point of view. The, the judicial activism, is it as much as it once used to be, is a mood point. Why don't I change the order a little bit? Kalikesh, get you in on that point. Um, you heard what, what, what Shapanda was saying. Uh, but would you agree with me? I mean, like, there, there are some people who would say that, yes, there was a time when judicial activism was the big thing to think about. Today, if anything, the judiciary, some could argue, is not stepping in often enough. Not stepping in often enough to say, excuse me, why did you pick that person up? Or why did you not that pick that person up? And how can you charge this person under ABC clauses when it does, it's not made out? Why was X person thrown, locked up for six months without anything? There are some who can argue that the judiciary should be playing a more active role. No, I, I completely agree with you, Vikram. I think in this day and age, I find, find the judiciary actually stepping back from, let's say, even seven or eight years ago. Where, uh, we discussed the extent of judicial activism, uh, given uh, given the fact that we had in Parliament had actually given over a lot of our uh, uh, you know space to them by, by by not legislating on issues that Parliament had a legal and constitutional right to do so. And now, having said that, uh, you know I also I also take to the Sopan's point of view that yes, uh, decision making is required, but. That, obviously, uh, but reaching out and trying to build a consensus is what I was seeking. Not really agreement across the board. I mean, that's never going to be possible. It's all in one party. The idea was to sort of try to reach out and build a consensus, explain your perspective rather than drive it through with brute force. I think that's where I was coming from. You know, honestly, the last uh, ray of hope for the Indian population, which is uh, which is not. Uh, you know, which, which falls itself uh, on the wrong side of the current government is the judiciary. And if, if they do not function in a more independent and impartisan manner, and they are unable to take up issues which matter to the opposition or which have a reflection on the constitution itself, I think then they will be seriously and severely failing the country. I think uh, we all know they are pressed for time and for resources. There are issues which need to be taken up by the judiciary, and they are, they are absolutely right in dismissing those issues which are just done for the sake of politics. I mean, I, without naming some of the parties, I think a lot of cases have been filed against the current incumbent central government, which are really very political and just filed for the sake of politics itself. I don't subscribe to that view. But certainly there are many issues where the issue of constitution, where the issue of federalism, of the rights of the state versus the center. You know, someone talked about GST. I'm talking about the fact that the finance minister, uh, Arun Jaitley, in the floor of the house had assured all the states that the, there, if there's any shortage in GST that will be paid out of yes. the central government's uh, uh, this thing and Aswapan was there too and even for the government to suggest that uh, you know they will not be able to make that payment or that the state should bear some of that burden I think that's 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 immoral and that's not keeping the promises so it's, it is in areas like this where I want to see the judiciary coming in place and where I want to see the institutions being impartial and and, and you know and being fair Right, Dinesh Bhai, the, the role of the judiciary, A, as Kalike shared in federalism and, you know, making sure that federal issues are kept, kept, kept up, but also what I was referring to when it comes to the rights of the individual. Uh, would you like to see the judiciary playing a more active role or a less active role? See, there are two institutions. One is the judiciary, which I talked about. And second is the presiding officers and not necessarily I'm talking about parliament. So all the states included. And, and, and it was rightly mentioned that even the presiding officer wants a ticket to fight the next election. So I think there has to be absolutely, you know, uh, and that's where, that's where uh, the statesmanship has really almost vanished. And as far as the judiciary is concerned, I think they should reflect upon it that after retirement, we are not going to accept any of the positions offered by any government be it center, be it state. So I think there has to be certain kind of introspection. And we in parliament can do it. Like Vikram, we are, we are so nicely and positively talking to each other, which itself is a big achievement. And I must compliment you and I must compliment ourselves that this can be done. Having said that, I, think is why I was just about to start shouting at you any minute now. Any minute. <laughs> so, Vikram, uh, lastly, I must tell you that we are, we are living in a world of 
digital dictatorship. When I say digital dictatorship, whether it's America or wherever, if, 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 if the President Trump says that some other country is influencing their election electronically, it means today the digital platform has captured your mind. It does not let you think. You think you are thinking, but it doesn't let you think. It, it orders you to do this. So the influence of digital is also great in this country. So all the more reason that people like Kalike, Shapan, myself, Priyanka, uh, irrespective of party, we must sit together. And actually, it's important to have inner democracy, which Kalikesh mentioned. And I think we should not run away from this. Uh, we have 50% of uh, the MPs today have serious criminal records. So every party looks at criminality. If it's winnable, they don't care. So if a criminal is there in my party, is good. The moment he goes to another party, he is bad, vice versa. So I think we must also, if we have to get our son or a daughter married, and if somebody has criminal record, we would not say, oh, that was just light. So we have got to take these things very seriously and Priyanka ji rightly mentioned about the constituents assembly debate actually they are bible for three years they went on and there was no ruckus because overall it was india country which mattered which was beyond the party and i think this still there is light at the end of the tunnel we all okay. can sit down and talk irrespective of party we belong to we can at least talk outside parliament, which we very often do. So, you know, I mean, like, obviously, uh, hey, uh, Dinesh Bhai, I'm going to extol the virtues of digital. I mean, look at the sort of things you can do with digital, the fact that information can spread. You can have a discussion like this without not a single person having yelled at anybody as of now or necessarily pointed fingers as yet. Looking looking now at some possible solution, we have about four or five minutes left to go. Is any of this going to change? Because I think all of us have been skirting around talking about uh, a slide in some sense, right? That there are certain ways in which some of what we would like to see is not, not happening. Can that be turned around? Can that be reversed? And how will that happen? Priyanka, will it be through states and the center talking to each other, political parties talking to each other? I mean, hey, the Shiv Sena and the BJP used to be allies for till not that long back, so conversation shouldn't be impossible. Or, as I was saying, it's going to require the judiciary perhaps to step in and a much larger level, not in, in perhaps being more activist and saying, you can't do this, you can't start eroding individual rights, for example. No, I, I personally believe that judiciary does not need to step into every single uh, logjam that India faces. Because like I said, democracy is about consensus. But now we are seeing a pattern where there is a, a critical space of distrust. Most uh, the, the civil society distrust the government structure, the executive body. They also uh, do not trust the transparency that they see. So for example, if there is a state government, state government does not trust the governor that has been trusted on them you have a governor who's interfering in the political system so when a person from the civil society wants to look for some kind of decision making they naturally run towards the judiciary that is something that needs to stop and that can only come when we have more trust uh, building where we see the state governments working along with the center the only reason why state governments are in a position of uh, uh, distrust at this point in time is because when the central government starts to talk, they try. They are not only talking from a point of arrogance, they are also talking from a point that you guys know nothing. We will need to put our agencies there. We will need to... We will need to supervise. So they start from a position of uh, belief that, you know, you can't do, you're incompetent. That's why we need to step in. That needs to end, especially the non-BJP government. So they feel we are the most competent. Our political party can run government. You all cannot. You all are full of corruption. You all are full of, uh, you know, inconsistencies, incapabilities, etc. So that is something that needs, that should be coming from the central government, where we see more uh, areas, common areas of uh, trust building, which uh, our government would be happy to do. All right, so we, as we end this, we seem to have come around to uh, a view which I think everyone seems to be expressing. There is obviously some, the session was supposed to be about building trust. Obviously, the need to build that trust is more important than ever before because 
clearly, whether it's the center of the state, one political party and, the, and another political party, the media, the judiciary, institutions, central and state, they obviously reflected in everything that all four of our panelists were saying is, there seems to have been some erosion of trust. Now, how is that going to be rebuilt and will it be rebuilt? And how soon will it rebuild is, of course, a well, very big question. I don't have the answers to that. Any, um, is it going to be better or worse in the next two years? Just one line from each of you. Kalikesh? Um, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's going to get worse. Shwapanda? I think people like this system. That's why, you know, it's, <laughs> that's the paradox. They like this system. <laughs> they like the fractions. <laughs> Voting turnout are going, getting better and better and better. So there's no erosion of democracy. This is the type of democracy. I think we are getting obsolete. Okay, <laughs> this is the democracy that people will li people like. Because if I understood you correctly, Shapanda, there's decisiveness, there's fractiousness. There's certainly a lot of hangama and excitement on TV and social media. So this is what people like, and therefore TRP. it's not going to get better. This thing gets the TRP. <laughs> it's what gets the TRPs as well. So, okay, this, this, they vote with their feet. I'm going to interpret that to mean it is going to continue. Dinesh Bhai, it's going to get better or worse? No, I'm very open. Shapandas put the whole question of what is better and what is worse also into question. So fine, <laughs> now, I'm, I don't trust my own good senses anymore. All right, Dinesh Bhai. <laughs> No, first of all, Vikram, I must tell you, I'm very optimistic about things. And, and just to correct about the digital, I love digital thing. And there are a lot of positive things about it. But but the influence of digital, that's what I meant. But otherwise, it's, it's a boon. Today, in the world of COVID, if there was no digitalization, we wouldn't have been able to do any work. So I'm very, very bullish on that. Don't get me wrong. Second thing, I'm very optimistic about it. Indian people have a lot of patience. Uh, I, I think, and I have no hesitation in saying that we in opposition also have to come up with a proper alternate narrative. We need not follow the narrative given by the, by, by, by the center party. We need to have a different positive narrative. And I think there is a need for a different central political party because at the moment, uh, unfortunately, at the central level, there is no national credible political party. And that's okay. what we need to build it up. Thank you. I suspect that's a subject for a subsequent debate and a discussion. And let's see if, that, if that's going to happen or not happen. But Priyanka, last quick line from you. So I'm an extremely positive person. I just feel things will get better. And India, whenever it has hit its lowest, it only rises faster and higher. So I'm very positive. All right. On that on that positive note from, uh, and even Kalikesh did say it's going to get worse, but then get better. So let's hope all of you are right. Uh, that's it for me for the moment. Let me toss Thank it back you, to, let me toss it back to Vasudev. Thank you, Vikram. Hi. Uh, uh, we were treated to a engrossing discussion under the unique moderation of Vikram Chandra. Thank you so much. Each of the panelists were wonderful, very clear and their views, very engrossing. I think if it was not for short of time, you would have heard much more. Thank you, Papi, for the wonderful forum. There are two more sessions post this, and I will request the viewers to attend the balance sessions too. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Vikram. Thank, thank, thank you, Papi. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, indeed. Thank you.